Well, again, good morning, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here today on what I consider a very momentous occasion for the University of Texas system, for UT Dallas, and for the ever more important field of brain health. Of course, none of us, none of us would be here were it not for the vision, the energy, and the hard work of Sandy Chapman and her team. So once again, let's give them a round of applause, please. You know, the appeal of a facility where everyone, sick, injured, or completely healthy, can come to make their brains healthier is evident in the tremendous financial support that, that we have seen that's been able to be generated for this facility. And I want to take a moment to thank the individuals, the foundations, and the businesses who have given so generously. And it was mentioned earlier, but I will tell you, one of the things that has surprised me about coming to the UT system hasn't been the job. Uh, I tell folks, I said, the transition from the military to higher education to clinical care, much to the surprise of a lot of people, was actually pretty easy. What has surprised me and what has inspired me is the great philanthropy, the great donors that I see every day. Because they not only give of their money, and the money is important, but they give of their time, they give of their energy, and probably more importantly, they give of their dreams. I was telling James, I have folks around the system who have day jobs, who are very busy, and they fight, they compete to be on panels and task forces and part of the UT system. And nothing could be more inspiring or more exhilarating for me as the chancellor to see that kind of dedication and that kind of devotion to the system. As some of you know, I've been in my new role for about 10 months. And in thinking about my vision for the system, one of the things that I've emphasized is that I want the University of Texas system to be in the middle of every important conversation taking place in higher education and clinical care around the country and around the world, whether the topic is science, medicine, literature, engineering, law, national security, you name it, I want people to ask, where is Texas on this issue? Not where is the UC system, not where is SUNY, where is Texas? I want people to ask, what does Texas think about this issue? So as I've gone around and talked to folks, I said, I want to hear that. What does Texas think about this issue? And that's still the goal. But interestingly, as I traveled around the state, visiting the 14 institutions, seeing the terrific work being done in the neurosciences, I found myself increasingly focused on the question, how does Texas think? How does Texas think? How can we as individuals, as a state, as a society, learn to think better? And in thinking better, become happier, more productive, more competitive, and ultimately more successful. But we're here today to break new ground, literally, as we commence the building of what will become a phenomenal new facility. But more importantly, we are setting in motion something that is going to produce groundbreaking discoveries, treatments, and positive changes in the way we live. And what a better place to do it than here in Dallas. It was in Dallas more than 40 years ago that Dr. Kenneth Cooper set in motion the physical fitness revolution. In 1968, the year Dr. Cooper published his bestseller, Aerobics, only 100,000 people in America were jogging. Only 100,000. Now there are more than 30 million Americans who run for fitness and good health. The physical fitness revolution changed the way America thought about exercise. As a society, we now understand the link between cardiovascular fitness and health. Untold millions of lives have been saved or improved thanks to the physical fitness revolution that started right here in Dallas. And right here in Dallas, I believe we are on the cusp of the next great revolution, a revolution in brain health. My hope and my belief is that 40 years from now, we will have made improvements in brain health of the same order of magnitude that we made in physical fitness, although I think the brain health advances will come much faster. We're going to know a lot more about how to take care of our brains, and we're going to need, because thanks to, in part to the physical fitness revolution, we're going to need it because people are living longer. To make the most of the years we have, we need to make sure that brain fitness catches up 
with physical fitness. And I'm convinced it's going to happen. And I'm here to state in no uncertain terms that the University of Texas system intends to lead this new revolution to benefit our state, our country, and the world. By breaking this new ground today, by breaking this ground today, we are moving Sandy Chapman's vision a big step closer to reality. To those whose generosity has helped make it possible, once again, I thank you. You are going to be proud of the work that is done here. Sandy and her team, I have made it clear that you can count on my support, but it should be just as clear that I expect big things from you. Among other things, I expect you to be bold, to take risks, to challenge conventional wisdom, and to push through the boundaries. I want you to be not just experts or scientists, but leaders in the field of brain health. This challenge is so important and, frankly, so interesting, it deserves nothing less than everything you have and everything I have. So thank you all again for being here today and for your support for this incredibly worthwhile endeavor. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you.